when did we forget that trans men used to be women? I have a question for the people who are supporting Rose Montoya. At what point do you not start to feel complicit with that? Trans women are exactly what we think they are. Rose Montoya essayed me. <laughs> Part one of 30. I think everybody just needs to learn to be a little more concise. No, I'm sorry if any of my, you know, tweets over the last few months or anything that I've posted where I haven't said anything directly. Uh, I hope I haven't caused any harm. I've only, I've only wanted to warn people since I found out that I wasn't the only one who was abused, that there are at least four others confirmed. And one of them's my good friend. And I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive myself that I didn't warn him before he was abused. I didn't get to him in time. I didn't know he was at risk. And I've, <laughs> it's been almost exactly five years since the first time she violated me. Like a couple weeks, it'll be the five year anniversary. Oh. And I've stayed silent. I have not publicly named her. Ever. What is this person doing? I know they're trying to pull up the email, but can we not be a little... And then they scroll through super fast. This is not... Does anybody know how to do anything anymore? What? Why is this so frustrating? We'll download it, we'll do some pauses, I'll be right back. I don't even know what's happening anymore. Okay, so his message, it's regarding goodbye, and it says, Rose, I never wanted to tell you this. I understand now that I should have been upfront with what I experienced and felt, but I wanted to believe that we could work through it without having to talk about that specific incident. One of the reasons I hated myself those last few months is because I thought I was the worst boyfriend ever. I thought having that reaction meant I was a bad lover and not a real man and a huge part of me still feels that way my feelings about what happened between us were slash are valid but nothing I did to handle those feelings was warranted I hated myself because I knew you deserve so much more and I didn't know how to be okay enough to give that part of myself to you there was a lot I should have been honest with you about but I was so ashamed of myself I regret so much the way I treated you I projected so much self-hate onto you you told me that I needed to love myself, so I've been working a lot on forgiveness since you left because maybe I could have shown both of us more love if I learned how to forgive more quickly and easily. I am forever sorry if I said or did anything that made you feel dysphoric or caused you pain or did anything to make you believe that you weren't perfect just the way you are. I also wanted to apologize because I wasn't able to finish one time recently for you. I was really trying, but I wasn't feeling well and I got triggered by something and I should have at least communicated those things to you. There's nothing wrong with your body. There would be something wrong with me if I thought that. Your anatomy is part of you and I was already falling for you before we were intimate. Over the years, I've been intimate with all sorts of folks. I've never been someone who has physical types they go for. Whether that be big bodies or tall bodies or whatever is between their pants. I've consensual and non-consensual encounters, not just with cis guys, but a cis girl too. I'm sorry if I ever said or did anything that made you think I had any issues with your body. You're the most gorgeous person I've ever developed a connection with, both inside and out. I made so many mistakes in the relationship and acted so poorly. Things happened between us that hurt us both. You didn't ruin what we had. I I did. I knew I needed to talk to you. I knew I needed to get us help. I allowed my fear of losing you to keep it all bottled up inside and I lost you anyway. I've been working with my therapist since you left. I may move back to the East Coast to continue working with her and start a new job training program. It's good to hear you're talking to someone too. It's not easy being trans and it can be helpful to talk to a professional. I am sorry I was so awful at communicating while we were together. It's something I am and always will be working on. Maybe one day we can talk or be a part of each other's lives. For now, I gotta let you go because this is what you want. I will always respect and support whatever you decide makes you happy. You deserve happiness in all forms. 
Okay, and now we're waiting for her reply. Okay, so now we get to, I'm really sorry I broke your trust and violated you. I'm heartbroken and feel awful. Even in our conversations, you never directly called me out or brought up this situation. I wish you told me that you wanted to reconnect with me and had told me all of this long ago. I genuinely thought for a while that you were triggered by me simply having a phallus. <laughs> I thought maybe you'd like me more or want to be intimate with me if I had a vagina. That caused me so much pain and dysphoria. I now understand why you kept pulling away and I don't blame you. I just wish I knew why then. I'm sorry I forced myself on you. I'm sorry I made you feel that way. That was horrible of me. I told myself I'd never do something like that to someone else and here we are. I'm surprised you didn't break up with me. I wish you could have gone to therapy. I wish we could have talked this through and been built trust together. Know that I am dedicated to working on myself and I'll be talking with a therapist about this and try to remember exactly what happened. You are my best friend, my favorite human, the person I came to with everything. I never wanted to hurt you. All I wanted to do was show you love, but I ruined that. Don't blame yourself, Jesse. We both made mistakes. We can't change the past, but I'm determined to make sure I respect you going forward so I won't continue to contact you or hurt you. Okay, and then there's some messy post that he shared Hey, at the Rose Montoya, did you end up seeking out professional help for your violent sexual urges like you told me you would in the email where you confessed to violating me or was that just another lie? You can block everyone who brings this to your attention, but you are only confirming you have something to run from. And if this is someone you follow, you should investigate the validity of her activism. And then he's tagging someone else who's like, hey, at Prince Joshua, are you aware that your sister, the Rose Montoya, causes a lot of harm to her community? More specifically our trans mass siblings have y'all talked about what accountability looks like and how you're going to take action to make amends with your trans mask siblings also going to a concert with celebrity whose husband is SA offender is not good look for our community but you and your sister know that right also why block me if you have nothing to be guilty of well because it sounds like you're being crazy I think anybody would block you if you were saying some stuff that doesn't really seem to add up like I said I have nothing for Rose Montoya I don't particularly like what she's done for the community and I have seen a couple videos from her but to me this sounds like somebody taking something out of context like why were you so apologetic in the stuff that you sent her it sounds like you both had a somewhat toxic relationship but at the same time that's a part of things and I didn't feel like she meant she physically forced herself on you maybe I'm wrong let me know in the comments but I think something smells fishy here and I'm not really feeling this I feel like these people are somehow trying to railroad Rose Montoya and Rose Montoya is a Biden supporter, I don't feel like I should be for her. But I got to say, right is right and wrong is wrong. And if I feel like something sounds fishy, I don't care if I agree with you politically or not. I don't care if I agree with the way you conduct yourself as an LGBT activist, which that's my bone that I can pick with Rose Montoya is I don't think that she's good for the community on an activist level. I maybe would have to see some of the other accusations. But like I said, two can be in cahoots. They're best friends. But then then when you say there's three others but they haven't come forward that all starts to sound kind of fishy to me and it sounds like there might be some kind of personal drama going on between all of you this is allyship this is not enabling the comfort of abuser just because they are also community members this is what it looks like to have trans women show up for trans men and then this person Italia put are you open to having discussion on how trans women have caused trauma to trans men without taking accountability for their actions. We are human and make mistakes, but repeated actions are more than mistakes. I've heard a lot in the streets, so I'll be more blunt. Are you ready to take accountability? At Rose Montoya. I refuse to stay silent for any longer. Rose Montoya essayed me during recovery from phases one and two of my surgery. It's confirmed that she has essayed at least four other trans mass folks since then. Warn your friends, warn the community. I have her confession that you will be able to see soon. Well, if it's anything like that confession that you claim to have in an email, 
Hey, at Rose Montoya, people have already seen your confession to violating me and forcing yourself upon me. Do you have a response to this story that Jordan Loeb's posted or will you continue avoiding anyone who tries to address this issue with you? Hashtag me too. And then this person put in the story, why is all this happening on Instagram? Why is nobody just going to the police? This seems like lesbian drama to tell you the truth. And I'm not trying to misgender anybody, but this does doesn't seem like anybody's taking this seriously. I've seen the confession. This woman is a fucking predator who keeps blocking people who call her out. Let's address this. Unfollow her. Well, if she's going to block you anyway, I don't think you have to unfollow her because that takes you away from being a follower or being followed by her. Also, why block me if you have nothing to be guilty of? Because you're acting crazy. What are you talking about? If this didn't happen, then why wouldn't somebody block you for trying trying to make this into a thing if it just if she's saying let's see yeah this turned out to be nothing she must have all her people monitoring her instagram because she's deleting comments and blocking folks speaking out about it I'll keep you guys updated, but for now, this has been nothing. This was a waste of time. This is why you can't take LGBT people seriously when they say these kinds of things, because then they just give you all this rigmarole and extra stuff that you don't need. If you're gonna call something in a confession, have it be a confession. Have it be what you're actually saying. It's a smoking gun. And you just highlighting certain parts of the conversation that feed what it is you're trying to say. Why don't you talk about why you gave that huge apology Apology for your toxic behavior or whatever it was you were saying. Why don't we address that while we're at it? Otherwise, keep this all to yourself if you're not ready to actually substantiate it. There's my puppy Bijou. If you're not really willing to actually substantiate it and be like, hey, here's all of it. And part one of 30, what are you talking about? I will offer this person a chance to be on my podcast though, or I'll interview them if they're open to it, but I don't think they're gonna be very open to it because I will ask legitimate questions that people would want to know if everybody's supposed to just buy that this person is in fact some sort of predator. It's maddening. Okay, so I found the article. What this article concentrates on first, and I'm not going to read it all to you, but what it concentrates on first is just the fact that that happened one year ago at the White House lawn, which to me, if you really wanted to get this story out, you would lead with that. And that would be the actual driving force of this article, not what she did back at the White House. Nobody cares. That was a year ago. But here's what it says. Just one year after the backlash, Montoya has now been accused of essay by his ex-girlfriend, Jesse Diamond, which I don't know why they're misgendering Jesse Diamond. Clearly, Jesse Diamond is a trans man. Anybody would think that's a trans man, but I don't know anything about Redux, so I need to look that up. But why is this turning into a rabbit hole? Uh, just one year after the backlash, Montoya has now been accused of essay by ex-girlfriend, Jesse Diamond, a female who identifies as a transgender man and uses the name trans muscle bear on social media. On June June 13th, Diamond posted a thread to X accusing Montoya of essaying her while she was recovering from fallow surgeries. The surgeries that attempts to make female genitalia resemble male genitalia. I attempted to end my life on more than one occasion due to how depressed I was from the trauma, Diamond explains in the thread. Diamond goes on to directly name Montoya as the abuser in question, which from the email that he had written her, it didn't sound like like that's what he was saying. It sounded like he wasn't comfortable with himself in some way, but it does. Diamond goes on to directly name Montoya as the abuser in question. In a video posted to TikTok, Diamond provides screenshots purported to be from Montoya admitting to the SA. The email, which was sent from, and then it gives her email address. I'm really sorry. I already read that to you guys. I already read all of that to you guys. While Redux was unable to confirm the authenticity of the email, the email address listed in the screenshots made public by Diamond matches an email on Montoya's personal website. Diamond has also revealed that Montoya accused her of domestic 
facts in response to the accusations. She also claims that she was not the only female who identifies as a man that Montoya has abused or assaulted. Elijah, the other known victims, and I just want the cycle of abuse to stop, Diamond wrote on X at the end of her thread. Like Montoya, Diamond is a well-known trans activist on social media and has shared her experience with genital surgery where she admitted that there were complications with the attempt to create a penis for her. It is technically broken, but I believe that there's a 98% chance it's still functional. Diamond shared on TikTok in a video that was later reposted by Libs of TikTok. Diamond explained on her TikTok that the method of phalloplasty she received was the semi-ridged rod, which is broken at the base. She also described the recovery process as hell and stated she was bedridden and had to learn how to walk again. It was during this time when Diamond was particularly vulnerable post-surgery that she alleges the abuse by Montoya occurred. I was physically incapable of walking the first 10 plus times that he R-worded me. I couldn't run away if I tried. I couldn't afford to stay anywhere else, Diamond wrote on her thread on X. She continued, I am so tired of living my life in fear. I feel the need to avoid going to public events because I'm afraid and he will find out where I live. I deserve peace and to move on with my life, but I can't do that without doing whatever I can to warn others. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Before I go any further, I'm just going to ask that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to leave a comment just to help me on the algorithm, but you don't know what to comment, just leave a knife. Because once again, trans activists are going to come from my neck for some of what I'm about to say. After researching a bit, because I watched the video and then I researched a bit, and I was just so annoyed with the lack of factual evidence that anybody was willing to include. It was all a bunch of feelings. And I get that feelings are valid, but when it comes to potentially ruining somebody's life because you're saying that a particular thing that really is one of the worst things you can be in society is to be deemed a predator or somebody that has committed SA. So while I do agree that Rose Montoya is terrible for the community, she does us no good as an activist and she doesn't need that position. So I do agree with that. But but I don't think false allegations are the way to go at it. And I know I probably shouldn't use the term false allegations, but I will use that term because with the statute of limitations for SA in California, which is where all these people are based, being 10 years or three years after you realize that anything has gone wrong or that you were in some way violated. So that kind of makes it indefinite. So if you're this person, Jesse Diamond, that- It's been almost exactly five years since the first time she violated me. And you feel this email really proves Rose is guilty of SA. Rose, why did you send me this email where you confessed to all the ways you harmed me? Then you should hightail it to the police, the court, or wherever you would have to go first to start the process to actually file the paperwork on this and get it adjudicated. That's what I would feel if you're serious about thinking that what you're saying happened actually happened. And the rest of that stuff when it comes to the DV situation, because that's the other thing. When he makes one of his videos where he says, You've accused me of DV even though you've admitted to DV. He doesn't say it was SA, which DV, domestic, and you guys know the other word, but he doesn't say anything about the SA in that video. And he's claiming that that's what that means when she said that she violated him. And I really do think that this was just a toxic relationship that both of them were lucky to get out of. And if we're all operating as adults, sometimes these things happen. We've all been in toxic relationships, some of us for long, longer periods of time, some of us for shorter periods of time. But we have all been in toxic situations that at some point you just cut it and call it a loss and there's no reason to completely try to ruin anybody's life. And there is also a part of me that feels like a lot of this is a clout chase because they're all trying to be influencers and Rose is the most popular as far as numbers go, especially on TikTok and also Instagram, I believe. But she's the only one that's an actual influencer. And understand, Rose came for 
Blair White and I absolutely love Blair White. Also, I don't like a lot of stuff that she says. So I'm 100% not trying to make excuses for her. And I'm saying if you want to take her out of the position of being an activist for the LGBTQ community, I think that would be great for all of us, honestly. But I, in good conscience, can't say that a person has done something that I don't think that they've done, even if I think that overall they're bad for the community. And the other thing that bothers me is that both of the accusers say that they just want her to apologize. So your problem isn't the legal aspect, which is kind of what you're trying to make it about. Your problem is you don't feel like she's contrite enough, which again doesn't make sense to me because if I were in that situation, Situation and somebody truly had essayed me, I would definitely want to hit them with the full extent of the law. If that kind of thing truly did happen, I would be looking for legal recourse. I wouldn't just be like, well, as long as you really say you're sorry and I feel like you really meant it and you put it on social media so everybody knows that you're sorry. Because that's the other thing the other accuser says during his very performative speech that he gave on Instagram. It was performative. It felt fake. Life is scary. <sighs> you can do it. You can do it. I'm just telling you from my point of view, it felt fake. But there's a point where he was like, all I've ever wanted her to do is just admit that she might have caused a little harm. She might have made me uncomfortable. That's all you want? You claim that this was this traumatic, horrible situation? And then there's a point where the second accuser says, You might actually have to face the court of public opinion. Well, if the court of public opinion is what we're going on, you're basically asking people like me to be a juror. And if I'm a juror, I wanna see actual evidence. I wanna hear what exactly happened. Not you alluding to kinda what happened. My first time meeting you, you took me in your parents' pool while they were in the living room and I'm just supposed to do what? Cause now I gotta go have Cheerios with your dad. I want to hear what has happened. As a juror, if I'm expected to convict somebody, then I should be able to at least hear the case. And if Rose isn't going to speak and you feel like you really have something to say and that people should take your side, then I feel like full details should be warranted. And that's another thing that bothered me is the first accuser, trans muscle bear, Jesse Diamond, in a TikTok response to the person that recorded that slow video said that he didn't like that she was asking questions. Well, then how do you expect anybody to just listen to you and believe you if they're not allowed to say, hey, this isn't adding up or what about this particular thing or how did this play out? Because there are things that we're allowed to wonder if, like I said, you're expecting us to convict them. If you're just handling it quietly with the courts, then I can understand how you can't talk about certain things. But if you're asking us, us to be basically your executioner how are we supposed to do this just blindly and because you say what makes you think that everybody just trusts that you're in the person that's definitely going to be right because one thing he left out in his video was he leaves out the part where he originally sent his message to her and that's what she was responding to so I ended up slowing it down because that's what he was scrolling through at a point and you'll see me get frustrated at that point because I'm like what's he scroll what's he doing right now because he's scrolling through and that turned out to be a blessing because I was able to pause it and if you notice their messages are within a couple hours of each other and he's telling her how much he messed up and that he projected self-hate onto her and that he wishes he had done things differently and that the relationship ending was all his fault and he also says that she chose to leave him you know she wanted to be left alone and she says she's not gonna bug him there's also a part in the email that he sends to her when he says that he's had experiences with cis as well as trans these are his words both consensual and non-consensual so the way that that was worded if you notice you can tell there's a typo somewhere in there but I'm not sure if he meant that several people have forced themselves upon him and again I'm not saying this is anybody's fault this part I'm just like trying to figure out 
But there's also the consensual, non-consensual, which is when you agree to have forced relations with another person. And it's part of the fantasy. It's fully consensual on both sides, but it's just called consensual, non-consensual because it's a role play where you both are in agreement that this is going to happen, but it's going to feel like somebody's being forced to do things that they don't want to do. So I bring that up because I think it is an important part of the email and it would be something that I would have questions about if somebody were to bring that to me and say, hey, I want you to make a decision on what you think about this person based on this particular email. I would be like, what does that line mean? So yeah, that's just a couple of things for you guys to consider. And I know they were saying like, there are five of us. So how many of us until we're actually believable? Yeah, but only two of you have come forward. So that means there are two of you. You can't ask me to consider evidence that you haven't properly introduced. For all I know, you're saying that there's five people, but it really is only the two of you. I could say there's four people on the other side of this camera that agree with me, knowing good and well that I'm in this room by myself right now. So I'm not saying you're lying, but I am saying you can't expect me or any else to take the word of five people when there's only two people that are saying anything. It's just not at all a reasonable ask. And I don't mean to be mean, but there's no other way to, for me to put this. It's just a psycho ex situation. And I hate to say it, but I think that Jesse and that other guy, the other trans guy, are kind of the psycho exes. And also, when the two accusers make a TikTok where they're letting Rose know that they've teamed up. Again, that to me doesn't feel like you're treating this seriously. I feel like for them, it is a bit of a game and again, a bit of a clout chase. But the main thing that I took away from all this is that basically what the trans community is doing right now is coming to the realization that we haven't been being transphobic with them when we've been saying, you have to acknowledge your biology. You can't just say, I'm a man or I'm a woman and magically you're a man or a woman. You can't just take hormones to buy your way into the club. I thought a part of my transition was you know, I was gonna be this masculine being. I went in the military, I was a weightlifter, I was an engineer, I did scary things, I worked on manly things. There's so much that goes into what makes us what we are, including societal or social conditioning. All of that factors in and there's just different ways that we see things. So yeah, yeah, it's okay to use people's pronouns and respect what it is people want. But when it comes to these situations, what I don't like is that now they're willing to acknowledge the fact that they are female. And I guess better late than never, but it just seems like the kind of situation where you were fine being a man until you got your ass kicked and then you wanted to remind us that you are a woman. When did we forget that trans men used to be women? And it's like, we've been telling you that all along. You're the ones that have been calling us transphobic for saying that. And so I guess my point is, if you're gonna say that you're a female or a woman that's choosing to present as a man, then that's something that I can understand. But if you're saying that you're a man like me or a man like any of the other biological men that you're claiming to be the same as, then you have to accept that certain scrapes, you just have to chalk up to the game. And I'm not trying to victim blame here, and I'm not saying anybody ever deserves it. That's not at all what I'm saying. But I am saying that as men, we know that the world is going to try us at different points. And the world isn't always going to feel bad for us when we end up in certain situations. So that's why I say you're fine being a man and you'll argue with us that you're a man and you'll tell us that you should be treated like any other man. But as soon as society starts treating you like a man, suddenly you want to remind us you're a woman. And it can't be both. If you're saying that this is 100% who you are and we're supposed to buy into it, you can't come running back to womanhood as soon as something goes wrong. It just doesn't make sense. If you're saying that Rose is a woman and she was maybe a little bit pushy with you. She might have not listened to my no the first time. She might have got a yes, but it might have not been real. 
in society, that's not something that anybody's going to take serious if you're dealing with a traditional male-female relationship. I understand that's not what this is. So that's why I'm saying it's okay to just start off on always acknowledging what everybody is. That way everything continues to stay consistent and actually makes sense. Because if you were a man and that happened, they'd just be like, oh, a woman forced herself on you? That shame that that cis men feel when they've been assaulted by a woman i never i never got it you could have said no you could have you're bigger you could have done something you could have put a straw off you you could uh i mean it just wouldn't be considered that big of a deal men should be able to push women off or not allow that to happen in the first place when it comes to coercion that's something i've dealt with a lot in my life i'll give you an example specifically once with a trans woman that she'd invited me to her house under the guise that we were gonna hang out and be friends and it was a daytime situation it wasn't like nighttime booty call anything like that and i had never given her any inclination that i would be interested in anything outside of being friends we just were being friends so i went over to her place and she started to ask me what i consider inappropriate questions i didn't really care i just knew i wasn't going to answer those questions so i told her in what i considered to be like a fun cheeky way that i basically wasn't answering her questions well she got a little bit aggressive and basically not in so many words threatened to fight me and so i just handled it like i would handle anything at that point and i was like are you threatening to fight me right now because i'm not interested in anything other than being your friend because that's what's going on here you asked me those questions for a reason i told you i wasn't going to answer those questions and now you're trying to get aggressive with me like you want to fight and then she realized what she was doing because basically she was was trying to threaten me into some kind of situation that I don't want to be in but I'm not a person that's ever going to go for that if I say no it's a no she let it go and to this day we're still friends and it's not something I hold against her this story reminded me but it's not always on my mind it's just one of those things that happened in our friendship and I as a man am used to people trying me one thing I can tell you is if he was really a man he would have buried all this anyway that's the way men work <laughs> you know I mean like I have a relationship that went terribly five years ago I'm not looking for that person I don't want to ruin their life I don't want anything to do with that and I think that even though it sounds like I'm joking or I laugh when I say it that that's kind of a lot of what's going on here is the roles are reversed in the way that they look but they're still playing kind of traditional roles in a sense let me know what you guys think down below in the comments if you guys have any questions for me or anything you want to say to me I definitely am open to it. I've tried to read as many of the comments that I can, but sometimes I do get a little overwhelmed. So be somewhat patient and understanding. Also, sometimes comments get lost. I don't know why, but comments do get lost. I never delete anything unless somebody's being verbally abusive with me. Outside of that, I just let everything stay on my comments. But for some reason, some of them disappear and that's a YouTube thing and something other people have talked about. So there's nothing I can do about that. But understand, it's not me deleting comments when that kind of thing happens. I really wish it wouldn't happen because sometimes when I'm reading comments people give me other ways to look at things where I'm like okay I hadn't thought of that that is a different way to look at it oh and also some of you guys have mentioned in the comments that Buck Angel had covered this in a different way I get that and I respect it because Buck Angel is a trans man so his knowledge of the intricacies of trans dating is probably going to be more in depth than mine because I'm not trans that you know of and I'm also not dating anybody that's trans or haven't dated anybody that's trans that you know of just playing I never have dated a trans person so the dynamics of an actual relationship with the trans person I wouldn't know but Buck Angel that's something that he can speak to and that's something that he obviously has experience with because he's a trans man that is in a relationship and has probably been in quite a few relationships
friendship. So when it comes to that, I understand if some people watch his videos and are like, but Buck says this. I'm like, I'm not going to argue with Buck. Buck is entitled to his opinion and I respect Buck's opinion and I'd be open to hearing anything he says. I watch Buck's videos. Like I said, originally that's how I decided to go ahead and release this because I was just going to delete all of this footage because I just felt like, yeah, I just don't feel like there's enough there. But having really considered it now, I do see how a lot of this stuff is important to talk about, especially with everybody trying to push the trans people are the same as biological males and females. No, we're really not the same. And it's okay to acknowledge that. And it will make it easier for all of us, including trans people themselves, to be able to figure out what's going on with them and why it is they're feeling the way that they're feeling and why it is they're reacting to the world the way that they're reacting to it and why it is the world's reacting to them the way the world's reacting to them. It just makes sense that if you acknowledge and you're being fully self-aware and you're not lying to yourself and saying, oh no, I'm the same as this. No, you're not. And that doesn't mean you're less than. It just means that you're different. There's nothing wrong with different. Accept that. Once you accept that, everything's easier. Trust me on that. So again, I know some people are going to say I'm victim blaming and some people are going to say that I'm not being nice or that I need to be more understanding, more empathetic, more sympathetic, whichever thetic I'm supposed to be. But it's just not what I feel is warranted in this particular situation. Maybe new evidence will come up and I'll be like, okay, well, that's more compelling. For right now, that's where I'm at. Thank you, everybody, for watching. As always, this has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. They bought into his bullshit.